Let's play 20 questions, physics edition. This is energy and motion. All of these questions apply to GCSE and A-level, but I've put a little bit of extra detail for A-level people when needed. Here we go. One, what is the equation for work done? E equals FD. You might see W equals FD, could be S instead of D as well. But I prefer E because it's energy. Work done equals force times distance. A-level people, don't forget that these must be parallel. If they're not, then we times by cos theta, the angle between. Two, what is work done measured in? It's joules because it is energy. Three, what is the equation for gravitational potential energy, or GPE? It's E equals MGH. GPE equals mass in kilograms times gravitational field strength, 9.81 times height. Technically, change in height. Four, what is the equation for kinetic energy? E equals half mv squared. That's kinetic energy equals half times mass times speed squared. Five, if something falls, why don't you need its mass to calculate its final speed, assuming ideal conditions? It's because half mv squared equals mgh, so the m's cancel and we end up with v squared equals 2gh. If you want to find v, just square root. Six, if GPE at the top does not equal Ke at the bottom, where has the energy been lost? It's been lost as work done against frictional forces. That's friction and air resistance. That increases the thermal energy store of surroundings. Yes, we need to talk about energy stores, sadly. A-level people, this energy can be used to find the size of friction using the work done equation. Seven, why does braking distance quadruple if you double your speed? It's because of the V squared in the kinetic energy equation. If you're doubling V, you're doubling it twice, so quadruples. Eight, what is the definition of internal energy? It's the sum of, or total, kinetic energy and potential energy of an object or substance. Nine, what does distance divided by time equal? Be careful. It equals average speed. We have to say average because we don't know what's happening to its speed across the distance. 10, what is the equation for acceleration? It's change in speed divided by time, or delta V divided by T. 11, what can a displacement time graph or distance time graph tell you? The gradient is equal to velocity, or speed of its distance time. That's change in distance divided by change in time. 12, what about a velocity time graph? The gradient of it is equal to acceleration, and the area under the graph is equal to the distance traveled. 13, what are the five SUVAT variables? S is displacement, U and V are initial and final velocity, A is acceleration, and T is of course time. 14, what is the difference between a scalar and a vector. A scalar just has magnitude, that is a number, e.g. a distance, speed or mass. A vector has a magnitude and direction, like displacement, velocity and acceleration, force as well. 15, for an object that's dropped or thrown horizontally, what do you already know, SUVAR wise? You know that initial speed is zero meters per second and acceleration is 9.81, acceleration due to gravity. Even if it's moving sideways, U vertically is still zero. 16, for an object thrown upwards to a height of 20 meters, what do you already know? You know that S is 20 meters, final speed is zero at the top, acceleration is minus 9.81, because if we're saying that up is positive, it's accelerating downwards, so it has to be minus. 17, with projectile motion, why don't we use SUVA horizontally, just vertically? What do we use instead? We assume no air resistance, so no deceleration, so we don't need SUVAT. Instead, we use speed equals distance over time for the horizontal speed. 18, what does a velocity time graph look like for a ball that's been thrown upwards and then comes back down? This is more of an A-level question. It's a straight line because it's a constant acceleration downwards. It's a negative gradient. 19, what is power and what is the equation to calculate it? Power is the rate of energy transfer or joules per second. So that means power equals energy divided by time. Symbol is P and the unit is watts. 20, what is the equation for efficiency? It's useful energy output divided by total energy input. That gives you a decimal and to turn it into a percentage, all you do is times by 100. Hope you found that helpful. Leave a like if you did. Click on the card if you wanna go on to the next mechanics flashcard questions. See you there.